Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Real Estate Post. Frank Gray here with our good friend, Barry Habib. I know you guys are all on pins and needles. You want to know what the heck is going on in the market. And Barry's going to inform you of that. Before we get started, Barry, just real quick. You know, it's a new year. People are looking to possibly move in, change in companies for whatever the reasons, right? Well, we've got uh, movement mortgage for the retail loan originators out there. If you guys are looking at maybe changing companies or whatever for the new year, you have to take a look at movement mortgage. Their banner is right here on the screen. It's over on your right or on Facebook. There's a link up above. And then also for you experienced account executives in the wholesale world, Remen is hiring as well. They've got plenty of opportunity for you and they're an amazing company. You definitely want to let those guys have a conversation with you as well. The Remen banner you see here on your screen is over on your right on the website, or there's a link up above on Facebook. So that's out of the way. Both awesome companies. Let's get on to the star of the hour, Barry Habib, because Barry, last time we were talking, you were saying, hey, man, we're thinking we're going to see rates kind of moving up. And that's kind of what happened. What's the deal here? What's going on? So it's interesting because we thought that uh, the 10 year treasury would go up to 2.635%. And it hit exactly on that level, held for most of the day at the end of last week. Then it just gave way a little bit. And we're, wor we're worried about that right now because look, it could possibly come back in there. But if we see us break over Friday's highs, which was 2.661 on the 10 year treasury, I don't want to get too technical here, but if that happens, there is a really, really strong probability we're going to be at uh, roughly 3%. To be exact, the number is 3.04% on the 10 year treasury. So, what does that mean if you're just strictly looking at for mortgage pricing, three eighths or so higher in rate in the near future, or about 150 basis points worse than it has already gotten uh, in the near future in price. So as bad as it might be right now, unless we make a very quick reversal, like in the next 24 hours uh, and get back underneath 2.635% in the next 24 hours, there's a really strong probability so you're going to see 3.04% in the 10 year or roughly about three eighths higher in mortgage rates or about 150 basis point loss in mortgage bond pricing very soon. That, you know, that brings me to this question, you know, and I hear this, you know, a lot, you know, with the, on the originator side of things is, is you've got some guys out there that just, they just say, Hey, you know, I don't have to worry about this. I'm just going to lock everything when I get it. I don't even want to think about it. But I mean, that's that was never my position when I was doing my originating. I was an originating fool out there. And, you know, I, my my customers always kind of looked at me as, you know, well, what do you think? You know, what's going to happen? I couldn't just see myself just going, ignore everything, just lock. It's just not my way. I mean, what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, if you think about, you know, when, when you see rates come up, a lot of times individuals will perk up and say, oh, well, I never have to worry about that. But, you know, there's a lot of times where you're in a flat or a downtrending market as well. And you're actually giving your clients pretty bad advice to just lock everything because you lose out on a couple of fronts there. You lose out if pricing got better. And a lot of originators say, hey, I don't care because it doesn't matter to me. It matters to my customer. Well, I don't know. I think we should try and do good for our customer. And a lot of originators say, well, you know, listen, I don't want to gamble. You're, you're kind of forced to gamble because you're forced to either gamble by locking, thinking rates are going to get worse, or you gamble on floating, thinking that, Rates are going to get better. We don't want to gamble, but our client or our client and ourselves are forced to take that gamble. Now, here's the thing, Frank, is that if you were to say, and I've heard people say this, say, look, even if the rates do get a little better, my client's too far down the line with me on a purchase to get out of it, so I'm okay. Well, you might be okay on that transaction, but are you okay on the relationship? You know. Uh, they're not going to exactly be screaming from the rooftops that they've gotten great advice. And here's the other thing that people don't recognize. There's also the element of time. Because even if the rate doesn't improve, if you gain time, like right now, if you had been locking all of your transactions right now, and let's just say we're right, and interest rates move up rather quickly, and for whatever reason, you needed an extension. It's a lot harder to get an extension if rates are much higher. Now, we've been kind of spoiled and we haven't seen that in a bit uh, because if rates start to move up and your rate lock had expired, it gets really expensive to either extend or to try and do something like that. However, if you had more time on the front end, well, then you possibly, possibly, I'm not saying every situation could have covered yourself there. So look, I know it's a tough situation. I know it's not easy, but 
think about it this way look at you know stockbrokers there's a reason why customers pay eight dollars for you know e-trade for a trade or five dollars and there's a reason why good advisors wind up getting one percent of the person's assets that they have under management so you know are you managing somebody's loans or are you doing transactions and i think that if you just lock everything without giving advice I, I lean towards saying that is a transactional mentality as opposed to really trying to encompass the fact that and we're never always going to be correct, but you can kind of move pretty swiftly and help people uh, take care of those opportunities. Look, it's, it's been your mentality, it's been my mentality, I think it's been the mentality of anybody who views this as I want to be an advisor to my customer and have loans under management. Let me ask you this. Um, so we have seen, you know, like you said, the 10 years pushing up here and What's been the pressure to do that? And what about this week going forward? Is there anything happening this week we got to worry about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we do have some housing data, which is really important, but it's not really going to impact rates. And, and the real reason why rates are moving up, and we've talked about this quite a bit, and it's so funny because the media just doesn't seem to get it, is that it's the Fed buying less. And, you know, Frank, one of the reasons why you and I have talked about this and said, why do we think that rates are moving higher is let's remember that when the Fed started this curtailment, so, so look, we, we know that the Fed um, had stopped QE and they put all these loans on their balance sheet. But what's happening is from the payoffs, you, you do somebody's refinance, you, you, somebody sells a home and they paid off their mortgage or just the principal payments, the Fed gets a lot of money. And what they do is they reinvest it. Now, just in mortgages, they get about $25 billion a month. And up until October, they had been reinvesting that whole $25 billion. On the Treasury side, they were getting like $40 billion and reinvesting that $40 billion. So what they had decided that they're going to do is they said, look, we'll reinvest, but instead of reinvesting all of it, we'll cut back $4 billion a month on mortgage bonds starting October, $6 billion a month in Treasury starting October, but then they doubled up on that in January. And isn't it interesting? Look at what rates have done since October and even an accelerated pace from January, bond prices has gotten a little worse, mortgage rates gone up. Nothing really else has changed that dramatically, right? So. It's just because the Fed's buying less. That's the real key to this. Now in April, they're ramping that up again. They'll go from, initially was buying roughly 25 billion to now they're gonna buy back 21 billion in, in October. Currently, it's more like 17. And now in April, which is not too far away, there'll be only 13, uh, it's funny to say only 13 billion. Uh, but that's gonna be about half of what they were buying. They were the largest buyer. And then they're gonna ramp that up again in, in in, in uh, July. Now remember, they're doing the same thing in $6 billion increments in treasuries as well. So that's putting pressure on treasury yields higher, putting pressure on mortgage rates higher. And you know, if the stock market has a big correction, big pullback, you'll see some relief there. But in the absence of that, the direction of interest rates is definitely higher, which you know, I think, Frank, this kind of also spells a little opportunity for us here to advise our customers accordingly. I think that we're going to see higher rates throughout the year. Not crazy, but you know, three eighths higher, half a percent higher throughout the year. Uh, why not get somebody into that refinance today, into that purchase today? Um, especially since we also know that real estate values, strictly because lack of supply and very strong demand, will continue to push home prices. What seems modest, about four or five percent, can still be an awful lot of money throughout the course of the year. So. Why not on a four hundred thousand dollar home? Why not save somebody twenty thousand dollars in price and a half a percent in rate by simply doing it now as opposed to waiting? And that that and that's our message. I mean, that's our message for our guys today. Now, guys, thank thank you, Barry. Number one, and guys, so here from the show. I mean, we glean. Yeah, we see rates moving up. Now you can explain to your clients why they're moving up, right? We have Fed's buying less. Uh, the the uh, QE is is uh, tapering down, so the Feds are buying less bonds, etc. You're seeing pressure pushing rates higher. I'll couple that with the fact that real estate's moving up as well. Now's the time to get things moving. If you were thinking about moving or, or making that move or buying that house, now's the time to do it. So a lot of great information today that you guys can use in your marketing efforts, even just an email blast out to your database. Hey, here's what's going on or your Facebook post, whatever it might be. And real fast, I know this is going kind of long, but guys, I want you to understand that you, know, you can try MBS Highway for free for two weeks. There's a link down below, you can give it a go. Um, so you can be in tune with what's going on. So you can be that advisor to your clients, let them know what rates are doing, what you anticipate, that kind of thing. Barry said, we got some news coming up this week. You got to keep your eye out on this stuff. If you, if you do the two-week trial, you'll be uh, very in tune with what's going on coming up. Real fast, Barry, your best 30-second. You've got a new product at the website as well. Your 30-second pitch on that, we got to get out of here. 
we got so much new things coming out and so many enhancements, but Loan Advisor is something that I think people have, we've gotten incredible reviews. I think you'd love it. It really helps you compare different loan options, helps you show easily your customer which one's the best at what time uh, for them. And it also shows how much it would cost you to delay the home buying process specific to your marketplace. Only one who does it and some, some great stuff coming up too. We have to be able to compare different home values, different markets, great stuff. Uh, just give it a try, take a look. I think you'll really like it. All right, with that, you guys, again, the link down below. If you're on the website, if you're on Facebook, there's a link up above or somewhere around here where you can give uh, MBS a try for a couple of weeks to check out the new product. Thanks for all the information, Barry. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll uh, do, us, do us a favor, guys. Leave your comments down below. If you got some comments for Barry, he tries to get in there and answer them for you if you can. Yeah. Uh, and also, forward, share, and subscribe. And we will catch you guys later here at the National Estate Post. Thanks, Barry. Thank you, bro.